Hello and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be looking at ways to reduce render times for projects with long input files. This is a video game channel and because of that I deal with large files at high frame rates. In fact, the videos we make are rendered at 1080p and 60 frames per second, which is higher than most video cameras record at. Because of this, we are limited in what we can change, but we have a couple of options. Now this is an episode of Stranded Deep. This is typical of what we put out on the channel five times a week. It is 31 minutes 35 seconds long and it takes 74 minutes to render. That's mostly because it is a 60 frames per second input and output. That means the encoder has to do a lot of heavy lifting. In fact, if I look at the input file, we have a file that is 16.6 .6 gigabytes in size and comes in at 31 minutes 36 seconds. If I right click on it and hit properties, there's a few more things to note. First of all, it's a CBR file because Premiere hates variable bitrate files. If you are editing in Premiere, you really, really want to be using CBR or constant bitrate files. The audio sample rate is just another little caveat to note. 48 kilohertz. That is because my audio, spoken audio, is recorded at 48 kilohertz. The sample rate for the audio in your video game video or your camera video and the sample rate in the spoken audio has to match, otherwise that will also desync the audio and video. At that point, what I would normally do is take them and drag them into the bin which I have already done. So we have June 6th WAV and we have June 6th Stranded Deep MP4. That gives us a video track and two audio tracks, one for the video game, one for the spoken audio. Spoken audio gets adjusted here, so we just make sure it is fairly loud. And then the video game audio is dropped down to around the 21 decibels area. Also, as we are editing, we make sure that the sounds of things like uh, engines as we are driving the raft, or if there's a storm going on, we make sure that the lightning doesn't deafen everyone. That's all done by hand manually using keyframes. Then we've also got a cut here just to skip the day and night cycle. We have a little bit of an Easter egg as we add in a bit of a TV show because there's a long running theme within the Stranded Deep video of jumping off the tailplane of a Douglas Dakota DC-3 into a pond and then just skipping into cinema. We have our intro, which is episode 760 of Stranded Deep, and we have a soft outro which has a card on it that our subscribe button and next video can go on without getting in the way of the screen that the viewers are watching. That then would normally be exported by going to File, Export and Media, Stranded MP4, 1920 by 1080 because we are exporting a 1080p video, frame rate is 60, NTSC and PAL don't seem to matter, render at maximum depth, level is 5.1 and bitrate settings are 1212 12, with a VBR of 2 pass. VBR can be done on the export without worrying about audio video sync. It's only the import that needs to be a CBR file. You have to have CBR within Premiere. And then there's this button here, use maximum render quality. Use maximum render quality only really affects things if you are scaling within the frame. If you're not doing a lot of scaling, then this button doesn't normally need to be ticked. But since it doesn't really affect the time it takes to render, I always leave it ticked. At this point, you can either hit export, which exports directly from Premiere, or Q, which opens up Adobe Media Encoder. This takes 74 minutes or one hour, 14 minutes for this particular episode. It is a long time and that's mostly down to the frame rate. If we go back to the top and find our frame rate, if we drop that down to 30 frames per second and then hit export or Q, we can half the render time. However, because we're dealing with video games and the video games are being recorded at 60 frames per second, if we were to output at 30 frames per second, motion, specifically left, right and up, down motion as the camera pans around or the character looks around, is going to be very, well, gritty, I guess is a word to describe it. You're going to give people motion sickness. 
you really want the frames to be as smooth as possible as you are looking around in game, especially if there is a lot of frenetic action going on. It does reduce render time by reducing the number of frames on screen, but it also makes things so that it makes the viewers a little bit more... They, they'll notice. They will absolutely notice. Are there any other video game channels that export at 1080p and 60 frames per second? Yes, Game Grumps do. If we hit the cog and if we hit the quality, we can see that they upload a 1080p 60 frames per second HD video. The videos underneath are actually handled by YouTube itself. You upload your MP4 and then it makes progressively smaller videos for things like tablets and mobile phones. You don't have to deal with that. That's not something you have to worry about. Only the 108060 is what you upload. That means if we go into here, we can see that the difference between that one long file, so that one single 60 frame per second file, if I edit it and export it, it took 74 minutes. If I export the same file at 30 frames per second, 39 minutes. Is there a better way of doing this to get the render time down without having to sacrifice the frame rate? Glad you asked. Yes, there is. There's two ways of doing it. Basically, what we need to do is we need to chop up this big, long file. And this big, long file here. Because if you've ever noticed, when you are rendering a file, rendering a video, the computer renders the first few minutes very, very quickly. But by the time it gets to the end of your project, what ends up happening is things slow down considerably. That is because it needs to count all of the frames. So for every 10 minutes, you have something like 10,000 frames if you're recording at 60 frames per second. If you get up to 30 minutes or even an hour or even two hours, things slow down so, so much. By breaking up that single file into shorter sections, it makes it easier for the encoder to work. We can do this in one of two ways. We can either in OBS go to File, Settings, Output, Recording, because we're recording locally rather than streaming. Everything's greyed out because we're obviously recording using OBS, but the recording path is actually onto an SSD and you should always be using solid state drives for anything related to video. The recording format is MP4. The video encoder for me is the NVIDIA NVENC H264 and that's because I use an NVIDIA graphics card. Audio is AAC. Rescale output. It's disabled here, but I would normally have this enabled because this is a 2.7K monitor. I would rather have OBS rescale down to 1920 by 1080 rather than have Premiere do that. If Premiere has to do it, it's going to slow down the rendering time. So you can save a bit of rendering speed by having OBS do your rescaling for you. Now, this last option is the option we're interested in. Automatic file splitting, split by time. You can put a tick in that box and then set a specific time period for the video to split down into. I would recommend nine minutes. Why nine minutes? Nine minutes seems to be the optimal time between nine and 10 minutes, either or. If I minimize that, uh, we have another way of doing this. If you don't use OBS or you already have a file and you say, I'd actually like to split this up. Is there another way of doing that? Yes, there is. And I'm glad you asked. For we can minimize that. We can move you off to one side and we can bring up Lossless Cut. Lossless Cut is available for free. Lossless Cut will cost you 16 bucks, depending on how you get it. I'm going to go through that now. If we go to GitHub and we find Lossless Cut on GitHub, you have a bunch of files which are kind of scary. Ignore all of these files, because you can. Here we have a picture of the GUI, which is quite lovely. I do like a GUI rather than having to use the command line. Scroll all the way down until you find download, and that's the important thing. We have a few options. The Mac App Store, we can get it from the Microsoft Store, or we can get it from Linux from the Snap Store. Snap Store. I got it. 
or Flathub. You're going to be paying 16 bucks if you get it from Microsoft, but the benefit is you don't need to deal with 7-zip files and it's updated automatically. You also pay the author for their work. However, this of course will always be free. If you want to download it for free, find your version down here, either the tarball, the DMG, or for Windows, the 7-zip file, click on it and download it. Unpack it into a folder and then run the executable which is what you will get here. Drag and drop files, and we can do that. We can drag the file in, and it will show us the video input. Now, this has not been edited yet. This is the raw footage from our recording session. I'm gonna break it into segments. So I'm gonna go to segments, and I'm gonna create fixed duration segments. And I'm gonna specify nine minutes. Okay and it's going to put down four sections. Now, I could put it into 10 minutes, but there might be an awkward section at the end. Nine minutes is short enough to be manageable, but it's also, well, change the time based on what you have at the end. If there's an awkward section at the end, make it shorter or make it longer. This is going to have a problem though. The problem is these sections are based on keyframes, so if we export it now, these sections aren't going to match. So we've got to go back to segments and we've got to go shift all segments to keyframes, which is the second to the last option. Boop. Do you want to align segment start or end timestamps to keyframes? I'm going to hit both. OK. Do you want to align segment times to the nearest, previous or next keyframe? Previous. OK. It's going to think about it and it's going to align all of these to keyframes, which means that when we hit file, in fact, we don't need to hit file. We can do it in the bottom right. We can just hit export from here. I'm so used to using Premiere. I can change my output file to the test. And in fact, output in there, select the folder, leave all of this as it is. So I want separate files, MP4, keeping two tracks if the input has two tracks. Uh, that's the output file, and then the name is going to be segment one, segment two. Don't need to smart cut, that's experimental. Keyframe cut mode, well we are cutting on keyframes, and we can essentially just leave everything. So hit export, and it's going to think about it for about a minute. If this took too long to do, it would not be worthwhile, because it would not save us any time in the render process. Export is done. Please test the output file in a desired player editor before you delete the source file. If output does not look right, see the help menu. Cut points may be inaccurate, which is why we cut on the keyframes. So we can close that and we can close this. What we should have now is our MP4 files and they are now, instead of 16.6 gigabytes, they are 4.72 gigabytes each, except for the last one, which is going to be smaller. That means that what we put in to Premiere or what we put into our encoder are smaller chunks for it to deal with when it comes to rendering. And we can see this if we go back into Premiere and we open up the other project, because I've been working on this before. We have a video section here. We have one here, we have one here, and we have one here. We have our cut from day and night, which is here. We have our little insert. It's exactly the same length because I use the same video project and I just left the output or the outro where it was and made sure everything lined up. And the time that we saved was fairly significant by simply cutting the long input file the long input file into smaller chunks, nine minute chunks, we have saved 30 minutes. So from the 60 FPS, one full file, one big ass long file, rendering it took 74 minutes or one hour, 14 minutes, just by cutting it into nine minute chunks, exactly the same otherwise, the same rendering options and everything, that's down to 43 minutes. That is a saving of 30 minutes. That's crazy rendering that long input file at 30 frames per second drops it from 74 minutes to 39 minutes 
the difference between 30 frames one long input file or 30 frames nine minute files that actually got it down by 15 minutes cutting your input file into chunks actually helps the encoder why ah buddy i don't have time to explain the universe but that's the way you do it either tell obs to cut things up as it's recording or use lossless cut to cut it up after the fact so I'm hoping that helps somebody. Getting 30 minutes off of the rendering time, especially if you're making five videos a week or six videos a week for a gaming channel, that's a huge, huge amount saved. I'll put a link to Lossless Cut below. Otherwise, if you're recording in OBS, make sure you're recording as a constant bit rate. Make sure your audio sample are the same, so 48 or 44.1 for the recorded audio and the recorded video. And other than that, I'll tell you what, I'll catch you next time.